Hey everyone, this is Mikuji Crypto. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Bitcoin. We're gonna be taking a look at the bullish scenario as well as the bearish scenario for BTC. Bitcoin is currently at 22,736. In fact, we hit $23,000. About seven to eight days ago, I made a video before I went on my vacation. The price of Bitcoin was approximately 18 to $19,000. We have gone up quite tremendously in the last seven to eight days. This gives us that question. The question is, is this the bottom for BTC? We take a look at the bullish scenario and the bearish scenario, and we try to understand where we currently are and what could potentially happen in the coming few weeks. So if this sounds interesting, let's get started. Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. Also, make sure to hit the like button. Before we get started, I would like to point out a few things. If you guys want a community of like-minded traders, check out the link in the Discord below. If you guys want to learn how to trade, how to pick up a skill, there's another link in the description below. That link will give you access to my Patreon. Now, let's jump right into the charts and let's take a look. I'll start off with the bullish scenario for BTC. And then we go off to the to the bearish scenario as to why this could be considered a bull trap for further movements towards the downside. I'm going to make another video, possibly tomorrow, where I'll be taking a look at the stock market. And um, I can't fit everything into this video, so I'll focus more on BTC on this video. And then tomorrow I'll make another one or the day after regarding the stock market. So let's start with the bullish scenario. Now, a lot of people on YouTube are talking about this Wyckoff accumulation right now. Because generally within and we tend to have an accumulation zone at the end of a bear market likewise at the top of a bull market we also tend to have a type of distribution a wyckoff distribution which has happened in the past right now we'll take a look at this as an accumulation point of view as to why smart money would like to buy in into specific areas we'll take a look at that so there are two accumulation for wyckoff one consists of a spring stage over here and the other does not have a spring stage. Okay, we'll start off with the spring stage and uh, we look at it right now. If you were to take a look at the Wyckoff accumulation right now, we have this PS stage, SC, AR phase. This all consists of phase A. This has worked out quite nicely as of now. Phase B, if I take a look at it right over here, <clears throat> phase B would be considered this area, this low that we had at approximately 15,500, would be considered phase B. And phase C is a spring stage, which consists of a lower low for Wyckoff accumulation, which is the first pattern. This would mean that if you reject the current position situation that we're in right now, which is approximately at $23,000, and make this way towards the downside, then I will consider this as a Wyckoff accumulation for a possible spring stage, which is a lower low. Okay, so again, look at this Wyckoff accumulation. I'll bring it up a little larger so you can see it. Again, this is pretty much matching what we currently have, right? We're pretty much matching this Wyckoff accumulation for now. I'll talk about where, where this could be considered as an invalidate, uh, invalidated Wyckoff accumulation. This is another way to look at Wyckoff accumulation. And this way to look at Wyckoff accumulation is another diagram. And this would basically tell you that we don't really have a spring stage, which means we don't have a lower low. So if I take a look at it once again, we have the SC stage, the AR, the ST, the phase B, which would be considered the bottom for BTC at 15,500. The phase C, which would be considered a higher low. And then phase E, which would be considered higher highs for BTC, ending this bear cycle. Okay, so this is the ultra bullish scenarios for Wyckoff. We'll talk about the first one, which consists of a spring stage, which means a lower low below $15,000, possibly going towards $14,000, $13,000, dollars I can't tell you that because we're not there yet. And the second stage saying that, or the second uh, Wyckoff accumulation, which is a different diagram for Wyckoff, will say that we're not making a spring stage, which is a lower low, and 15.5K has officially been the bottom for BTC. Now, if you guys know me, I don't really trade Wyckoff, but right now this is matching Wyckoff's accumulation phase quite nicely, and you cannot uh, deny that we have a phase B. And it's matching on both diagrams quite nicely. The only difference is one has a spring and one doesn't. One has a lower low, while the other says that this was the bottom for BTC. 
Now let's take a look at my style of trading, where I like to look at Fibonacci's and try to get a better understanding of where we currently are. Okay, so this is where we currently are. Now for the Wyckoff to be considered as invalidated, okay, so I said that we are currently at 23,000. According to the diagram, we shouldn't really break above this. For the Wyckoff to be considered invalidated, we should not break above $25,000. If we break above $25,000, then this Wyckoff is considered invalidated. Okay, so let me repeat that. If we break above $25,000, then we're not making a lower high. In fact, we're making a higher high, which means that this diagram wouldn't really match our price action for now. So we shouldn't break $25,000. As of right now, what we ended up doing was we ended up making a type of falling wedge. And we ended up breaking towards the upside which is where we're trying to head towards now. And that target right now is approximately $25,000, which is the measure move of this falling wedge towards the downside. So again, if I draw this falling wedge like so, I take the trend line of the, the width of the diagram, I place it above the area of the breakout, and that is giving my target at $25,000. Again, according to Wyckoff, we shouldn't be breaking about 25, and our target for the falling wedge is at 25K. Let's take a look at this from a different point of view. Let's take a look at this from the bearish point of view. Now, I've made many videos in the past. I've talked to you guys about a premium area and a discounted area. I've told you guys this. With the Fibonacci, if we're below the 50 of the Fibonacci, this is be considered an excellent buying opportunity. This is a discount. This is where smart money likes to buy in every time we have a bear cycle. And as you can see over here in the year 2013, in the year 2013, when we hit that 50 of the Fibonacci, seen right over here, we had a bounce of 68% towards the upside before coming down and crashing once again towards the 618. Okay, so this is important. This is very important because every time we've hit this 50 of the Fibonacci, we've had a bounce. We did this in 2013. Okay, again, we hit the 50. We had a 68% bounce towards the upside. This, I'm sure as hell, know that everyone got hella bullish when we had this move towards the upside. We look at this. This is the year of 2017. Again, I have drawn out the Fibonacci, the 50, the 618. I've showed you guys in this diagram that the, above the 50 is a premium, below the 50 is a discount. Once again, we hit the 50 right over here, and we had a bounce of 94% to 95% towards the upside. Once again, we came and we hit the 50 over here, and we had a bounce of 47% towards the upside in the year of 2018 before ultimately crashing below the 50 going towards the 618 and in fact going towards the 786 so we did have a mega crash after bouncing off the 50 this is in the year 2017 2018 let's look at it again once again in the year 2019 to 2020 we came towards that 50 we had a bounce of approximately 63 percent towards the upside before ultimately coming down and crashing below that 50 and going towards the 618 and the 786 where we had a mega crash once again. I've showed you three scenarios. I've showed you 2013, 2014. I've showed you 2017 to 2018 and finally 2019 to 2020. While every time we hit the 50, we had a minimum bounce of 40% or so. Where was it? was right here, 47% was the minimum bounce that we've had, and the highest bounce we've had is 95%, which is pretty insane, because when we have had these bounces in the past, I'm sure people would have thought that the bear cycle is over while we've had these bounces, and in fact, these were just bull traps. These trapped the bullish people, and it went down against them. Now let's take a look at our current scenario. Our current scenario right now is we in fact came down and we hit the 50. We came down, we hit the 50. We currently have a bounce of 47%. In the past, the minimum bounce we've had is 47%, and the maximum we've had is 95%. Our current bounce is 47%. Now, does this mean that we're going to go back down and test that 618? That 618 is coming in at approximately $11,600. We have done it in the past, once in 2013, twice in 2018 and three times in 2019 we've had major bounces off the 50 before finally coming down and hitting that 618 and this is where we currently are 
Okay, this is where we currently are. Again, our bullish scenario would be the Wyckoff. Our bear scenario would be the fact that this would just be considered a bull trap to push us further down. I'm going to be making another video regarding the S&P 500, and I'll talk to you guys about um, the S&P 500. Or you know what? I'm just going to talk about the S&P 500 right now. I'll make a more detailed video about the SPX a little later. Okay? I'll give you a brief overview of where we currently are for the SPX. If we take a look at the SPX, we are still currently downtrending for the SPX. Nothing has really changed for the SPX. In fact, what we have for the SPX is a potential head and shoulders for the SPX, where we have a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. Even if this right shoulder is considered invalidated, we have a potential for a double top, which is still considered a bearish scenario for the SPX, grabbing liquidity to push the price down. Again, nothing has changed for the SPX. We are still quite bearish on the macro for the SPX towards the downside. Now, if there is a recession, if the SPX is expected to dump towards the downside, will Bitcoin also follow? And will Bitcoin make this move down towards the 618 like it has three out of three times in the past? I'm going to have to take a look at the SPX again in a different video, and I'll give you a proper analysis of the SPX on a later date. But as of right now, the SPX is still making lower highs and lower lows. It is not bullish as of yet. And as of now, there is still potential to go further down for the S&P 500. And if this were to happen, there's more, li more likely than none that BTC will also follow the S&P towards the downside, fulfilling that 618 move towards the downside, the 618 coming at 11,500. All right. Or again, is this a white off accumulation? We'll have to wait and see. Um, I mean, I'll try to play it uh, ear by ear and I'll tell you guys exactly where we currently are when uh, it makes these moves. So every two to three days, I'll try to put up a video to see where we currently are. But as of right now, yes, we are bullish. As of right now, yes, we have made this move up. And right now we have tested a major zone resistance at 23K. Our next zone is coming in at $25,000, which is matching in with this really nice descending trend line again at 25K. If we break about 25K, this invalidates Wyckoff accumulation. But this could also potentially, if we break about 25K, this puts this 50 and 618 more likely, I would say. And uh, we also have to take a look at a bullish scenario if we break above 25K, which I'll talk about more in detail at a later date. Okay, so again, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. If you want to follow me on the Discord chat, Look at the Discord link in the description below. It is absolutely free to join, join the Discord. There's over 200 traders on that Discord. It's a very informative place uh, in order to understand where we currently are. If you truly want to learn where to buy the bottom, uh, not the bottom, but where to buy good areas to buy in, because no one can really tell you where the bottom is going to be for BTC, I would suggest joining the Discord. It gives you an informed decision as to what you want to do in the coming future. Okay, so again, thank you for watching, guys, and have a good one. Bye.